So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. I got a bag of scraps from the kitchen. Let's go feed the chickens. You guys hang in there. Got a lot going on today. All right, girls. We got you all some, uh, looks like some hot dog buns and some leftover salad. Pretty good stuff right here. All right. There's plenty for everybody, so no fighting today. Especially you, you're the worst for that. Calm down. Well, we had one escape on, let's get back in here. They are enjoying that right there. That's one good thing about chickens. You have less trash, cause they take all the kitchen scraps. So some of you guys have been asking what we feed our chickens here at the sawmill. And we pretty much just feed them just your regular chicken scratch and the regular feed you get at the feed store. But we do supplement that with some, uh, those worms. I can't remember what those things are called, but man, they're expensive. It's like $25 for a, a pound or two of these worms. Mealworms, I think that's what you call them. I'll have to go look here in a minute. So we do mealworms and they also get all the scraps from the kitchen. And if you do all that, they're actually not that expensive to feed. All right, friends, what we just unloaded is my new diesel transfer tank. And I bought this off Amazon. It's made by a company called Dow Jones. And I looked up the specifications of it and it's actually made over in Italy. It will hold 106 gallons and it has a pump built into it. You just have to put a battery on it. I'll try to find a picture on Amazon here to show you guys what it looks like cause I'm not going to take it out of this packaging just yet because I want to get this little lean-to built first so I can go ahead and put it over there and keep it out of the weather. And it does have forts on this side right here. I think it's about four foot wide. So you can put your forts in it to transfer it in the truck bed to go fill up your diesel tank. And this will be the fuel tank that we fill up all the tractors with and the track loader. Been needing this for a long time. I'm really glad it's finally here. So the next thing on the agenda today is head up here to the sawmill and do some cleanup show you guys what I got in mind. So three things to do up here at the sawmill. Number one is haul those slabs down to the burn pile. Number two is get rid of this sawdust. And number three, we're gonna move these white oats out of the way, these six by sixes. I got two of them right there and right there. And that's what I roll the logs on to the mill. And we're gonna clean up all this bark out here and get it hauled over to the compost pile. There's probably about four or five inches of tree bark just embedded in this whole area right here. I got some over there too.
friends, it's the next day. I got a lot of this stuff cleared out of here. I still need to raise up all the hydraulic arms on the mill and the outriggers and get underneath the sawmill and get all that bark out right there. And that's not sawdust, that's just all the bark that comes off of these logs when you saw them up. The chain turner causes a lot of it. It's so aggressive, it does tear the bark off of it. And out here on the log area where we bring the logs in, I got a little bit of bark left to clean up. I got a pile right there, over there, and a little bit right there. And we'll go ahead and get the track loader and get the rest of this up and then bring some logs in here. Right now we got some rain headed in. It's supposed to be here at about three o'clock. And what is it? Man, it's already two o'clock. So let's get this cleaned up and then we'll get the 754 and bring some logs up to the sawmill. And hopefully the rain won't last too long. They say it's going to end at about five o'clock. So hopefully we can weather the storm for a couple of hours and come back out here this evening and start sawing up that cedar order. You guys hang in there. After I dumped that little stroop of bark, I happened to look down at the fuel and it's about empty. So, better fill this up real fast. And this is gonna be painful. This machine holds, I think, 25 gallons. And I'm not sure how much diesel I have left in this tank right here. So I wanna be careful. I don't wanna run out totally because I need some for the sawmill this weekend. I need to get this other tank installed that we got the other day. Well, that storm's over. It rained for about half an hour. Not too bad. We still got a lot done this afternoon. But before we head up to the sawmill and start working on that cedar, it's time to feed the chickens. So we're giving the chickens about half a dozen. Maybe there's more in there than that. I'm not sure the wife fried these up. But this is some scrambled eggs. And when I showed this in a previous video, a lot of you guys didn't understand what I was doing. So everybody knows that an egg is a good source of protein and it's good for the chickens as well. Their shells are also a good nutrition for them. We take those and dry them out and crush them up. And I think my wife mixes those in with their feed. We usually fry up the eggs and scramble and do these separate. But a lot of people in that video didn't understand that or maybe they've never saw it before. But a lot of people who have chickens feed some of their eggs back to their chickens. Now we sell eggs here at my sawmill. We sell them to a few of my neighbors, some family members. We usually run out every week actually because everybody wants them. But these eggs right here are rejected. My wife goes through them and she inspects them when they come in the house. And for some reason or another, these are rejected for, you know, it could be a cracked shell, you know, could be something that don't look right with them. Who knows? But we do reject eggs daily, maybe one or two a day usually for those reasons. But we save those eggs and about every probably five to six days maybe we fry them up and scramble them and feed them back to the girls. It's a good way of using eggs that you don't want to sell to somebody but still get a benefit out of it. And as you can see, they thoroughly enjoy them. No complaints right here. Now let's share there, ladies, and make sure everybody gets some. These will be gone in probably 30 seconds. These girls are relentless, I'll tell you what.
All right, friends, more red cedar here on the sawmill. We're doing four quarter boards, a true one inches on the thickness if you're new to this channel. Random width, but I'll probably shoot for about seven inches on a log like this. Maybe eight, I don't know. A little bit of taper on this end down here. I'd say seven will be pretty good if we can do that. I'm gonna guess about 42 board feet in this log. Maybe more, maybe less, something like that. These smaller logs, when you do your Doyle scale, that's what we use here in Northeast Tennessee is the Doyle log scale. On smaller logs, the sawmill gets favored. So uh, on the Doyle scale for a log like this, it may say 28 board feet or 25 board feet, but you'll probably end up with about 42. But as the log gets bigger, the scale kind of gets even and gets accurate when you get to about 18 inches and above. So. Uh, Always keep that in mind if you're out here buying logs. And also be very, uh, be very uh, cautious about what scale that you use. Some loggers like to use the international scale. Some use the Doyle. Some do it by weight down in Georgia. I know my buddy Jake, he buys it by the ton down there. So uh, there's a lot of different ways people buy logs out here. Always know what your logger is measuring at that. That way you're both on the same page. So we'll open this one up and see what's inside of it. It should be a pretty good log. I don't see any major defects or anything going on with it over here on this side. We've got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7 on the mill. If you want those blades, give Joe a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I've talked about it. We might as well use it. Let's make this interesting. This is my log scale that I use. This is made by Logrite. Now, Logrite does sponsor me here on this channel. They're not telling me to tell you guys about this scale right here. And there's a link down below if you want to go buy one. If you're running a sawmill, you need one of these right here as bad as you need a cant hook because it really keeps you in check with your board footage on a log, especially if you're buying it from a logger and you can show them what you're measuring at. That way everybody's on the same page. So down here on this end right here, we're nine inches on the diameter and this is an eight footer. So it's actually calling for 12 board feet out of this log. When you measure a log, you always measure on the small end, never measure on the large end. And this is a really good scale. It has Doyle on that side, and it pretty much gives you all the increments here for your log. But this is real simple to use. It's got a little catch here on the end that you hook on the end of your log. You get your diameter, then you look, you have 8, 10, and 12, and that shows you how many board feet are in that. Then you flip it over, and it does 14, 16, 18, and 20 foot logs with the same way of measuring them, giving you the same information. 